to master oneself is to master one's mind, body, and spirit. They say a warrior is the twofold ways of pen and sword. To devote your life to a set of moral values, to seek calmness in the mind, and the mastery of the way of the sword. This is Bushido, the way of the warrior, and this is Ronin. I was born on a cold cement floor in Saigon. My mother shielded my body from incoming artillery fire and more my birth. At this stage of the war, you know, American troops had left Vietnam and this left a devastating impact on the people of South Vietnam. At three years old, my family and I, we escaped on an overstuffed wooden fishing boat. When I say this, it's, you know, maybe it fits 40 people, you know, at the most, but on this boat, on this night, we're jamming a hundred plus people onto this boat. Because of the fleeing refugees, the, uh, the pirate tree and the bandits came in from neighboring countries and they would forcefully stop the fleeing refugees. They would board boats. They would kill the men, rape the women, and torture the children. In fact, it was common practice amongst fleeing refugees to carry poison within their belongings. They would use this poison so to poison their children so that they may die a peaceful death and not be tortured. Somehow we made it past the, the pie tree and we made our way into Malaysia where the Malaysian Coast Guard forcefully stopped our boats. They, they roped us, they pulled us back out into the ocean, shot our motor, cut the lines, and they left us there to die. You know, what was a short trip from Vietnam into Malaysia, which was a couple days, uh, turned out to be we were stranded out there for 30 days on the ocean. People were dying, people were getting sick. And then, you know, a miracle transpired. There was a Russian supply boat that was exiting out of Vietnam. And they had two decisions when they, when they saw us. They had two decisions. They can look at us as the enemy, but this crew chose humanity. And they saved us. They provided medical aid to us. They gave us food and water. You know, and they took us to Indonesian um, refugee camp. And somehow we, we survived there for a year and a half. You know, later on in life, I asked my mother, I'm like, why a year and a half, mom? Why, why so long? And, you know, she said to me, she said, you know, son, you know, there was other countries that accept refugees, Canada, Australia, you know, New Zealand. But she told me there was a promise that she made to my grandfather who funded our escape. He said that you need to do what you can to be American. Because my aunt, she married a American Special Forces Green Beret officer. And his G base got overran. He got stabbed by SKS Bennett. They didn't think he was going to make it, but he's a Green Beret. And somehow he made it back to the States. Um, he married my aunt. And they sponsored the paperwork for us to come over to America. You know, eventually we made it to America. And I can tell you, you know, it wasn't. It was an all sunshine and rainbows, man. We were not accepted. You know, it was a lot of hate, man, a lot of discrimination. I got picked on, beaten in school for looking different. We were poor, you know, so it wasn't, it wasn't easy. My biological father left us and it was a very difficult time. But shortly after that, my mother remarried to American Special Forces Green Beret. And he raised us, you know, but it was a very strict upbringing. And I struggle, I struggle a lot with the discipline and I struggle a lot with the sacrifices that I had to make to, to obtain this life of discipline. It was very difficult. Even though I had this discipline, I was still struggling. I was still being picked on, bullied, spit on in class. It wasn't until 11 years old when I had two things to happen to me that changed my life. My uncle picked me up and he was driving and he must have known something was bothering me. And out of blue, he said something to me. I'll never forget to this day. He said, too, there'll be days that your bones ache when people doubt at you, pick on you, when they spit on your face and flick you off and say, you don't belong here and you're hurting and you're feeling sorry for yourself. You need to ask yourself, do you want to be a commando today? Can you imagine that? 11 years old, commando life of discipline. You know, later on that year, my mother took me across town and she would deliver food to the needy. 
in hours we drove and on the way back she told me you know i asked my mother i'm like why why do you do this they don't appreciate you and she stopped the car and she said no matter the conditions circumstances if we can we must help others and in doing so we create a better world see the thing is from 8 to 11 i lived in this regimented life of the special forces you know my my that father was special forces, my uncle was special forces, his teammates all came. So I knew the Green Beret mission, to free the oppressed, to free the enslaved. I knew that that was the way for me. I knew if I grew up that the special forces, if I joined the A-teams, that I'm able to travel around the world and I can fight for the, the very people that my family was, that I can protect the defenseless. So I knew at 11 years old that I wanted to go to the A-teams. I wanted to be a Green Beret. So I continued education, you know, continued a life of discipline. At 16, I had a plan in my timeline. I started physical training. I started, you know, a lot of intensive muscular endurance training, a lot of endurance-based training, because I was prepping for what's gonna happen. So at 18, I enlisted in the military, but Back then, there was no direct entry program. You just didn't get into the Special Forces. So when I first enlisted in the military, I, I was an 82nd paratrooper, and I went to a long-range reconnaissance team. When I made the rank, finally, at 21 years old, I was uh, on the Special Forces A team for a station in Okinawa, Japan. I did 18 years as a Special Forces Green Beret. I traveled around 27 countries fighting and freeing those oppressed. It wasn't until my 15th, 16th year that I truly faced the struggles. Uh, at that time, I was battling um, addictions with painkillers. I used the painkillers because, you know, we got injured overseas. But what I found was that these painkillers, they, they masked my pain from the realities of life. You know, at that point, I, I've been to 27 countries. I saw the worst in humanity. It wasn't until after I retired from the military, after 23 years of service, was when I reached my, my lowest point. I had no purpose, and I was heavily addicted to painkillers. I was sitting in a dark house one morning. I was staring at a TV that was off, had a blanket wrapped around me. I wanted to quit in life. I was just having a really bad day. And somehow, a voice told me to get up. And I walked around my house and somehow I ended up in front of my bookcase. And I reached in and I pulled out a book that I haven't read in years since I was 13. It was the Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto Musashi, a ronin that was born back in the late 1500s. This ronin was everything I wanted to be as a young child, as a warrior, but yet here I am, lost. And there was one passage that Musashi said, all your love, all your compassion, everything is within. Look nowhere else. Everything exists. Everything's within. At that point, I was looking for my answers everywhere else. I was looking for the answers in these painkillers. I was looking for the answers in my father, my, my wife, but the answer was within myself. See, I found that answer when I was 11 years old, but somehow I lost my way. And I realized that at that moment, and that was the seed for change. And I took advantage of that energy. And I dumped all the, the opiates. I worked hard every day. I built discipline to try to establish this life of peace. What's really unique about this is that through the path of peace, somehow I helped so many other people. And this was the path being a Bushido, it's the path of a warrior. So through finding my peace and, and developing myself and then through discipline, I became Ronin. It was through this new discipline that allowed me to change my life. You, the discipline that I had in the military was a different discipline. This discipline is getting up at 4.30 in the morning. It's showing gratitude to God and the universe and life. And it's to promise God to, to be the best human being I can be for that day. It's to work on my mind 
and find peace within myself. And then it's to really work on my, my training, my physical fitness, what made me who I was as a warrior. And now my wife and I, we travel all through the United States, giving back to communities, helping out you know, our, our law enforcement, training law-abiding citizens so they can protect and defend their homes because that's the love of my country. And at this stage of my life, it's about my wife and I traveling around America and spending spending as much time together as possible and building these beautiful memories, but also together we're serving a higher purpose. Without this discipline, I would still have been in that dark place. But because I dedicated my life to this new type of discipline, I was able to find my peace. I was able to be a better husband to my wife, better son to my parents, better son to God. It was through this discipline that I mastered my mind, my body, and my spirit. And it was through my pain and suffering was when I found purpose. And purpose was what made me Ronin.